Morning guys. Have a another flea bay edition and uh, I'm combining about I think I've got a couple other days and, and then today that we're gonna put together hopefully they're fairly short. Um, I said I was doing too many of these and I didn't want to do as many but I'm seeing some interesting stuff pop up here lately and some stuff that's definitely worth looking at uh, just to identify them and see some of the neat things that are there. So I've got one item here that we're gonna look at today and only one item there's there's some milling machine parts uh, of a guy that's parting one out he I think in the, when I was looking at this stuff yesterday and shot a little video why he had some uh, parts for the milling machine that I feel are way too way too overpriced they're twice what they should be um, they're worth half at best and most of them are main castings and things like that that do you absolutely no good there's no sense in buying them and I would not buy them uh, he does have a stand one of those uh, sheet metal stands that he's got listed there and wants 400 bucks for it which you know good bad or otherwise I don't know I um, I'm seeing more and more of the, the stamp stands pop up and I think it's because these guys are figuring they can get three four five hundred bucks for them and you know I don't know I'd be hard-pressed to, to give that much for them but page your money takes your chances to decide what you want so anyway the um, I, and I'm just gonna run these through the this first one and it's not actually a lathe that I normally look at this is an Atlas clothing 4804 12 inch lathe and the seller wants 599 for it and then local pickup now uh, let's read his description lathe complete with uh, 7508 steel cabinet great rugged heavy-duty general purpose precision lathe was saved out of a machine rebuilder shed had plans to restore it but now another lathe need the space uh, has some light service rust now that's kind of an understatement probably from sitting in the shed uh, as I began to clean it up most of the service rust comes off with degreaser and a rag so I know the machine is savable and a good candidate for someone's restoration the cabinet has some rust on the interior of the cabinet but all is there and salvageable one drawer is missing out of it uh, been one repair made to the counter shaft support need to be redone as the drive pulley is not parallel to the motor pulley the wave looked to be in good shape no noticeable damage or heavy wear spindle bearings still have oil in them and feel really good saddle has oil in it motor has exterior surface rust but runs strong and quiet spins freely when turned off and bearings feel really good i have a video of it running quick change gearbox doesn't seem to have any damage and is well caked in grease gear train is complete and in good shape it's mostly caked in grease few small wear marks on some gears and the twin reverse gears have some wear on them uh six inch four jaw skinner junior four four zero zero six chuck complete tail tail rest the tail stock steady rest c12 326 threading attachment and a larger three-quarter horsepower 120 220 single phase motor and then it gives the specs weighs 535 pounds cabinet is 225 and gives dimensions sold as is type of thing uh, shipping and freight can be arranged so this basically I would consider a you know if you're in the area pick it up machine now we'll just leave the pictures this is no cherry by any means but when we look at this uh, for $599 when you compare it to any of the Atlas 10 or 12 inches that they're trying to get you know $1,500 $1,200 on up in my opinion this machine the way it sits and it's gonna have to have some work done to it it's it's kind of a ragged machine for 600 bucks in my opinion you've got three times the machine as a standard little flat weight Atlas this has V-ways on it and everything uh, you've got three times the machine for half the money of what they're wanting so it's a bigger machine it's basically only going to be able to be put in your garage rather than move to your basement something like that although it can be um, to me this is a much better buy and a much more functional machine than any of these little atlases you're going to buy you know and as i said before i'm a fan of the the smaller atlas stuff that's why i've got lathe mills and shapers so you know you got to make your own choices on this stuff but the disadvantage is it is bigger it is harder to move the advantage is it is bigger heavier and it's going to produce better work it's a stronger machine all the way around so just wanted to point that out and that's something to keep in in mind when you're shopping for these small little atlas machines the the atlas machines are still more of a cult following if you look at them from a strictly functional standpoint there's a whole lot of other machines that are a whole lot more ruggedly built they're a, a more accurate and better machine than the atlas machines are so yeah we follow these atlas machines we kind of covet them quite a bit they're a little bit easier to move around and and um, have in your garage shop or your basement shop or whatever the case may be so but it's just something to consider because you're going to be able to ultimately produce better work and um, 
more work and, and a little bit larger work than you can easily on the Atlas machines. So uh, even though this is a kind of a ragged machine, I think this would probably be, you know, you could probably put this machine together with a little cleanup and everything and have a functional machine faster than you are with screwing around with an Atlas and finding you've got this strip gear or you've got to find this used change gear or stuff like that. This this eliminates a lot of those problems from the from the lighter duty parts. So I would consider this a machine condition and everything else wise as uh, comparable to the Sheldon, the second Sheldon lathe that I've got that I've shown previously that I'm going to go through and, and be working on. You know, it also is missing a few parts, although it's it's basically complete and all there. Um, needs some reassembly and it's going to need a little figure out. So um, just something to consider. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to add these other clips in this when we edit it and I'm going to put it out there for you guys and hopefully you find something useful here. So anyway, thanks for taking the time to watch guys. There's a couple of interesting things. There's actually a set of milling machine index centers here that's way overpriced, but we can look at. But anyway, let's uh, very quickly go through this under um, under shapers. There's nothing new here. Somebody's listed a modified shaper tool holder they're advertising it for uh, atlas craftsman it's it's a larger tool holder been cut down so it will fit on the smaller machines but it takes a 3 8 shaper bit or a 3 8 tool bit which is actually a little bit too big for these small machines you know i mean this will work on there but you're taking up a lot of real estate for a what would normally be a fairly compact installation so i would pass there they want 25 bucks and nine dollars shipping that's still a pass something modified all right here's a couple from one of our great sellers uh atlas horizontal m1 401b spindle belt guard cast aluminum this fool wants 300 bucks and 6580 shipping um another pot smoker here you know i mean this is uh this is a guy down that has been doing this he's been way overpriced on stuff um description mill m1401b spindle belt guard cast aluminum original finish will pack with care and ship via usps well um 6580 shipping is way too high but anyway 300 dollars will make offer i think this is a guard that you know i'm probably doing these i don't know that i've got, even got these listed but i'll introduce these here directly again that's a 200 dollars guard and 30 bucks to ship it you know i mean these this guard is worth half so it, it's only worth half quickly look at the big picture it's got a knob you can see it's kind of um looks like it's it's uh pockmarked up a little bit there i mean it's a good guard there's nothing wrong with it the paint's okay on it but it's not a 300 hundred dollar guard these are it's worth half it's worth half used guard is worth half okay let's move right along here He's got the lower guard right next to it, 200 or right below, two hundred fifty dollars and twenty one fifty shipping. It's worth half. Um, you know, same, same description. Uh, belt guard, cast aluminum, original paint, in great condition. Will pack with care in a large flat rate box. And he wants twenty one fifty expedited shipping. Now twenty one fifty shipping is okay, but two hundred fifty bucks for the guard. No, it's worth half. It does have the hinge and the hinge pin, although there's no uh, knob on it, but. Uh, it's it's worth half of that that's all these that's all these things are worth it is worth half 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 um there again you know not a bad looking guard paints chipped on it and stuff um good guard but it's only worth half 402b i did shoot some stuff on the differences between these guards i haven't edited it yet um but the three different styles of guards on the milling machine why i've got um i've got two of the guards you know i've got the the early guard on my uh mill on my primary little mill and then i've got pictures of the intermediate side guard and then i've got a set of the um later model guards which is what this is anyway worth half now there's a set of index centers here Oh, down below it, there's a vintage cross slide table, 77 by 7 by, and it's supposed to be 7. Uh, Atlas Mill Drill Press W68 with jaws, and it does have the vice jaws on top. It wants 400 bucks and $72 shipping. It's worth half. Um, we're not going to look at it, but that's what it is. It's worth half. And this is a set of index centers. Um, 
This is Sella has been around a little while and listing quite a bit of stuff. Atlas Craftsman Milling Machine Index Dividing Accessory Parts and Gears. Hard to find accessory. Look at the pictures. These are the parts I have. If not in the pictures, they're not included. Has wear and tear, so use is restore or use for so use as is, restore or use for parts. Gears look very nice. Um, will end listing when I see a bid. Well, then you're not really putting it out for auction, are you? You know, they're trying to get you to jump on that. Does have a make offer. Well, it's worth half they want 750 bucks and then 22.95 shipping so the shipping is not bad but it's not worth 750 dollars you know you guys are going to see this and say yep yeah, we don't see these very often this is a neat accessory for on the atlas mills it's not worth it um for for what you spend on them you can have a much better index setup than there is for this you know um, like I say, neat, but not perfect. It's missing one lock and lock knob, you know, doesn't have the, uh, locks. Everything else looks complete. Um, these, I believe came with a center on this side too. This is the drive dog. And I think originally they came with a drive dog, which is not a big deal, but I think they originally had a drive dog. This does have the gears with it, or at least part of the gears. Um, it's in okay condition. You know, there's nothing at all wrong with this index center other than a couple little parts that's missing. Doesn't have the hole down bolts and the T-nuts that, that go with it. Um, we'll just look at the pictures. The, the handles look okay and everything. Um, not a bad looking setup, but it's only worth half of this. So don't get all caught up in this, you know, gotta have it type of thing. Not, not worth what they're asking. I'm not sure if this is original or not this this lock knob on the back to lock the gears on um that looks kind of different to me but there again i'm not sure otherwise looks pretty complete you know not a bad looking setup but it's it's not worth you know it's worth half 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 so that's what the index centers look like when they're pretty much complete so it's got the alignment um guide on the bottom one two three four five six seven looks like it's got eight gears with a total so you know it's not a bad setup but it's not worth uh not worth what they're asking for it it's worth half so that's pretty much all that's listed under mills that's new don't see anything else there and if we go to lathes New listing, South Bend Lathe, 910K, 11, 2 inch, 1 and a half by 8 tap, high speed seal, GH3, ground appears, unused, Logan and Atlas, new open box, 100 bucks, man, you're smoking dope. Um, for the little bit that you're actually going to use a large tap like this, and I have a, you know, I've got taps to do most of these, um, for the amount that they want for this, go and buy an import. You know, you're not going to use it that much, you're not doing production parts, and yeah, it's that's way too much. Um, I won't even go and look at that. I don't know that I'm going to look at any of these. There's a Atlas Lay tool holder pre-owned $25. This is a straight tool holder for the, I think these are a 3 uh $25 with no bids so far and $8 shipping. That's, that's not really a bad price if you need one. And guys will use these on the shapers too, just because they're a straight. They'll use the bent ones too, but left and rights, but um, they use these on the shapers quite a bit just because it's what's available to them. Not really proper for on the shapers, but you can grind your tools so they work okay. Um, a frontal lathe, you know, I've said before, it's nice to have a set of standard tool holders like this, but for the most part, they have very limited use once you really get going. They're, they're universal. That's the good thing about them, but they're a little bit slower to set up. Everybody wants quick change tool holders. Um, so is it worth investing what amounts to big bucks if you're after a complete set of these um or are you better off just to buy an imported axa style tool holder which is more common and and you you know you do more um do more with them for the most part atlas craftsman south bend logan lay tail stock l-4 pre-owned 75 dollars buy it now free shipping I'm not even going to look at this. This is not, this isn't a, an atlas that we deal with anyway. Um, 
Very nice Atlas Craftsman 6618 lay tailstock hand wheel crank handle 9-104. 1975 or best offer 595 shipping. This is the um, this is the seller that's been here. Let's see what's this. Is there anything in the description? Um, yeah, he gives dimensions, but it's it's standard for the Atlas. It is the the knob for the Atlas tool holders, and there's only the one picture here. Um, not a bad looking handle. You know, this is the original one. These are all pressed in. We talked yesterday or the day before about there's one on here that's threaded this brand new for 10 bucks. It's somebody's import from one of our countries that we probably really don't want to deal with. But anyway, this is the proper one for the Atlas hand wheels, and they all took this hand wheel or this knob as far as I know. I do a reproduction of these, and I just looked on the Atlas Machine Shop website. I, evidently, I had these listed on the Hills Gun website, but since it's down and not rebuilt yet, and I wouldn't put this back up there anyway, I don't have these on the website. I will try and get them loaded back on there, um, hopefully sometime later today if I have time. The, and I think that's what I sell. A, one of my reproductions is turned in stainless steel for is 20 bucks, and then that three bucks four bucks five bucks shipping something like that um so is this a good deal if you want an original one it's it's too much for an original one but it's probably not a not a bad deal if you're looking for a hand wheel um like i say i i do a, one out of stainless steel for the same money so of course i'm going to tell you i like my stainless steel ones better and that's all that's really here um there's a bunch of lathe parts listed down here from somebody that's parting them out and this is one of the sellers that does a bunch of stuff wants wants way too much money for all this junk 55 dollars for a uh and 625 for a lead screw bearing support um no you know 65 bucks for hand wheels cross slides and compound hand wheels 135 bucks for the big counter shaft pulley and that's too much money for these you know, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't waste my money with the seller at all. So, anyway, I just found mainly those index centers, that set of index centers, kind of uh, interesting. So hopefully, you find that a little bit interesting when you're or useful when you're looking for parts. Okay, guys, I've um, this is a quick little flea bay edition, and I'm doing entirely too many of these, but um, I'm seeing some stuff pop up that it's actually interesting here in this one. So. I'm probably going to tag this one on to one that I shot a couple of days ago, a little short one, and um, put them together because uh, there's an interesting item here. Let me quickly go through this stuff. Um, here under milling machines, there's, there's the normal foolishness. Um, the only thing that's new here is there is a milling machine head casting. Uh, there's three listings here a milling machine m128 gear guard cover for m1 and mh machines and a 402b motor belt guard now i still cast this motor belt guard i think mine are 150 dollars. they want 175 for this one in shipping anyway I'll, let's quickly look at these um they're saying excellent condition these have been cleaned up exceptionally well this is a completely stripped head here that we're looking at and um you know, it's a good head casting. Why do you need one? It's not worthwhile to rebuild a machine or to change out major components on these at this point in time. Um, they want 95 bucks for this in shipping. Um, it's it's a waste of money. A head casting is a head casting. So if you're if you're in need of a head casting, you're in need of so much stuff that it's not worth doing. So there's absolutely no reason to buy this. You know, if you were to buy a head casting, it's going to be... Um, you know, it's worth 50 bucks. It's worth half. So that's head casting. Now this, this side guard cover there again for the production machines and stuff. Um, this has, this is just a casting that just covers that end for the production machines. There's no, um, there's no provisions for, um, gear gears or anything like that for your power feeds. So this has very limited use. You know, I talked about not being worthwhile to, um, build a production build a production machine so interesting but um you know 85 bucks and then 15 dollars shipping there there's no use for it you know it's if you need a casting they're worth half there's no there's no market for these uh, and then the m1 402b 
um, cover, good looking cover. It's the same one that I cast, do a reproduction of. Um, I think I'm charging 150 bucks for them. They want 175 and shipping on this one. This is all original. Um, this has got the, the set screw that holds the knob on, and that's the way they did these. They just had a slotted head um, set screw that went through. It's threaded into the casting, and then it's also threaded in the back of the knob. So that's the way they're affixed. And then there's a steel rivet inserted here. And when you get one of these from me, they've also got that steel uh, rivet inserted. That's just for the latch mechanism. So it, that rivet latches on the latches onto the little spring steel latches there so that it, uh, it locks it in place and doesn't wear a big groove in the side of the guard. So anyway, that's them. You know, this is the, you know, this guard is the only one that could potentially be useful for anybody and i think 175 is too much i think a, you know my reproduction guards are 150 um i think uh originals are better but i also don't think originals are worth as much you know i think they're 100 125 dollars for the for the guards themselves in a used condition so you know you can make that decision yourself pays your money takes your chances now the thing that was interesting to me here <coughs> There's a couple new things listed under lays, but the thing that I found interesting and is worth noting is there's a Atlas Metal Lathe 10 54 inch bed with accessories, pre-owned, 1500 bucks or best offer and free local pickup. And this is the brand new listing and this is the only reason I'm doing this little addition here today is this is worth looking at. Um, and it's listed wrong. Mid 1930s 10 inch Atlas metal lathe with a 54 inch bed. This is perhaps the nicest and oldest Atlas lathe I've seen. It includes a tailstock, steady rest, three jaw chuck, chuck key, follow rest, thread dial, lantern tool, post tool holders, live center, dead center, drill chuck with key. Change gears are included along with the motor and a forward reverse drum switch. This lathe also includes the original Atlas lit switch with Atlas embossed face place. This is a quiet and smooth running lathe that is ready for a hobby shop. Uh, local pickup only type of thing. Um, and I had not even read the description. I'd looked at the pictures of this. Now, this is a seller that's been around for a little while. It's not one that I normally recognize as seeing here selling machine tool parts. So if we look at the big pictures on this, this is not a 10 inch lathe. This is actually a very early nine inch, um, as near as I can tell. And I'm not familiar with these lathes, so I'm not going to value it. 1500 bucks. You know, you make that decision yourself. The problem with this as I see it is it's a it's going to be a morphodite machine there's going to be no source of parts even on the used market for the most part you know you you'll occasionally see these real old machines and there's some interesting stuff on this machine but from the catalogs that I've gotten I haven't researched this very deeply we can look at the pictures first but um, vertical uh, counter shaft machine which I believe the early ones like this all were and there's some better pictures along the way. And there's several things that lead me to believe this is a nine inch rather than a 10 inch. So there's a big picture, you know, and accessories and stuff. You can't really tell where. This is a very early Atlas badging. You know, I've not, uh, I've not seen one of these badges in person. Um, accessories are here for it. There again, the, um, you know, to the Atlas world, this would not be the proper hand wheel here, but it may very well have been original to that lathe. Um, and let me, let me reference this very quickly here and see, yes, actually that is the original handle for this lathe. Um, you know, the later ones all had three spokes on the hand wheels here, whereas this one's got four. I just noticed that, um, there's several things that are interesting about this machine. Now this is not going to have a power cross feed. Of course, this is going to be manual, manual feed, um, tail stock there again, four spoke wheels, later Atlas stuff all had three. Um, I've never seen one of these switches embossed with Atlas on it. And when you first look at the guards on this, it doesn't see the steady rest is going to fit whatever size this machine this is. And I'm there again, I believe it to be a nine inch machine. Um, the original handle, it does have a thread stop that bolts on there. It, it's for its age and everything. I it looks like a pretty nice machine. You know, you can't really tell the wear. You're seeing the normal marks, and, and I'm sure being this old, it is relatively well worn. Um, but it is a very interesting machine, just because you don't see them. Uh, D two one zero eight. It looks like there again. That number means nothing to me. Um, 
this guard is going to be the factory guard. That's the way the early ones were, from what I understand. Um, and part of the reason I believe it's a nine too is this is a nine dash something. I don't remember what the rest of the what the rest of the numbers are for the uh, numbers on that tailstock, but that nine would indicate a nine inch to me rather than a ten inch. So um, interesting machine. You know, I don't know. Is it worth fifteen hundred bucks? I don't know. You know, I'm not going to try and value it, but it is mis it is mislisted as near as I can tell. Like I say, I do believe it to be a nine inch machine. So um, there again, do your due diligence, do your research if you're investing in something like this because it seems to be pretty well tooled. It's what it is is what it is. You know, you're not going to run out and buy replacement parts if you need them for this uh, for this machine because I don't believe hardly anything if anything will transfer over from a 10 inch you know if something breaks down you can cobble something together if you've you know but um not uh, not going to have readily available parts but a, an interesting machine it's got some stuff like i say that i've never seen so and the way i've ascertained this and we'll just hold this up and see if we can't uh this is the atlas lathe catalog and this is a number five catalog so it's not dated at all i've already looked to see what the date was on it but it shows that lathe that originally sold for the big $79. You know? So, interesting. You know, interesting setup. But, um, you know, pays your money, takes your chances. So, back whenever this was done, why? Um, you know, and I don't know when this was, when this was printed, or, you know, when this catalog was printed. Because there's no... There's no, um, well, actually the 54 inch lathe machine gave you, um, 36 inches of travel weighed 200 and let me get my old guy glasses on here. Um, 36 inches between centers, 229 pounds sold for a hundred and nine dollars. So. There's the machine right there. That be it. Early nine inch. Interesting machine. Interesting, interesting. But yeah, I see no, um, there's no dates on any of this stuff. So. I just thought that was, uh, an extremely interesting piece that you don't see too many of along the way. And that will be the original switch, too, that's on it. So, anyway, hopefully you find that a little bit interesting, useful. Comments, suggestions, leave them in the comment section for me below. Now, see, let's look in, while we're right here, let's look in catalog 25. We've got number 25 catalog here. Let's see if they show... Catalog 25 was 1936, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't really show. I don't have a date for that too. This is obviously quite a bit later. I think the next catalog I've got is from 1934, and by then they uh, they were doing the 1934 catalog was catalog number 34 and so on. So. Yeah, and see by this this 25 why the uh from appearances of the pictures why it, it had the later guarding on it so we got to the 10 inch by then yeah the designs had completely changed by by catalog 25 so i don't know the exact date of that number five catalog but yeah everything in the uh in this catalog shows well we have paperwork here um yeah this 25 catalog the the paperwork in it is 1937 it looks like so we're going to assume that well that, that numbering doesn't make sense to me either so maybe that maybe the um paperwork for this is later than the later than the uh 
catalog itself. When I when I acquired this catalog, they came together, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they were both from the the same era. Anyway, hopefully you can find that a little bit useful. Comments, suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And as always, guys, thanks for taking the time to watch.